Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on Minister's Foundation. Yeah, we have many of our friends still joining in the class. Okay, before we could begin our class, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am, I can pray. Yes, Rubika, thank you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you have given us a new day, Lord. We praise you and lift your holy name high, Lord. Lord, many of them pass away from the earth, but your great grace and mercy soured on your children, Lord. Yes, Father, you are great, Lord. Lord, I pray for this session, Lord, that you have given, Lord, with your knowledge and wisdom, Lord. Yes, Father, you are the good father lord that you do mighty things on your children life lord yes lord lord we want your holy spirit in this place in this sessions lord that your holy spirit guides us lord, guide us lord jesus thank you father thank you father that you are hearing our prayer lord lord you never given up to your children lord jesus father i lift your name high lord jesus Father, you are the holy Lord. You are the glorified Lord Jesus. We worship your name, Lord Jesus. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for hearing our prayer and giving answer from the heaven, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rebecca. Yes. I'm just presenting a screen. So last class, we studied on angels godly counsel, the renewed mind, the times and seasons. So I would like to retreat on certain things about, uh, you know, whatever has been thought and shared in this class are, uh, you know, are, are for our understanding, the testimonies that we shared from a personal life are, are, are for our understanding. And we cannot base our life on the testimony of another person. Okay, our life should be determined by uh, what the word of God says. We need to place our trust, our faith on the word of God and not based on uh, anyone's testimony or uh, how they experienced. And uh, okay, and also I shared about the visitation about the angels and other things. So each person, it is different. So we should not be praying and calling and asking directly for the angels, but then just pray, just pray. What I meant was, you know, in Psalms 91, when we claim for protection, God, as per his word, as he said, that I will set my angels in charge of you. That word is so true. This is what I meant to say, that God truly, you know, keeps his angel to guard us, to guide us, to strengthen us. Even uh, yesterday when we studied on the life of Elijah, when he was tired, yes, uh, you know, God sent his angel to strengthen him. So God does things. So it, it does not mean that we have to pray for angel to come and strengthen us. But then we need to pray to God and God does things. So we should not be expecting for any angelic visitation, but then just simply pray and ask God to strengthen us. And God does things in his own way the way that we need, okay? And very important is that we need to rely only on the word of God, not on anyone's testimony or on their personal experience or the idea what they have got them applied for, okay? We need to be very clear mm -hmm. on that. Even at the initially, at the beginning of the class also, we have retreated it. I just thought, uh, you know, on the last class, even before we could cover the last point, it is good for us to 
be clear on this. OK, so the last point today, we would be discussing on the circumstance and divine orchestration. Circumstance and divine orchestration. You know, uh, we see that uh, the final method or the way that we could consider through which God guides us is by recognizing how God is orchestrating things for us in our situation, in our circumstance, in our life. Okay, so let's turn to Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. Can I request one of us to please read the scripture? Second Chronicles chapter 16, verses 9. For the eyes of the Lord run and to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Yes. The eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. So God is seeking for those people who are loyal to him. Who are loyal to him. And he applies his power on behalf of them. On the areas in which God does this. Uh, in situations as such, you know, he orchestrates divine things for us. Uh, through which, you know, we experience an unusual door of opportunity open up or favor and access to uh, from new people or many other things God can cause it to happen in our life situation when we uh, trust on God, when we be loyal to him, we see this unusual door open. And, uh, you know, sometimes God works to us, as he said in, uh, in the book of Corinthians, uh, uh, in the book of Corinthians saying that, In the book of Corinthians saying that, you know, what eyes have not seen, what uh, ears have not heard, what people has never imagined in 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 such things, God, uh, you know, uh, helps us in our life. And we see in the book of Job, when we turn to book of Job, 42 verse 2. Can one of us please read the scripture? Job 42. Yes. I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. I know that you can do everything that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Can we move on to the next scripture? Revelations chapter 3 verse 7. Yes. Can one of us read? Revelation chapter 3, verses 7. And to the angel of the Lord in, Phil in Philadelphia, write these things, say, He who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Yes. Yes, this is very clear. When God does things, he opens door unusual way and no one can shut that door. No one can shut, stop that opportunity from we getting. And when he opens it, no one can shut. And when he shuts, no one can open. It is very clear. So we need to be attentive to this type of divine orchestrating that happens in our life situation and respond to it actively. For example, if one of us are trying for a job or looking out for a job, we may do the basic preparation, like you know, uh, uh, you know, preparing the resume, applying it, uh, uh, applying it online or through different portals, or passing a word through your friends, the known people, and then you start attending the interview. And when you attend the interview now, maybe you applied for uh, uh, three to four jobs and. You have been selected from one company. You receive an offer letter uh, from or a job offer from one of the company. And it's a great opportunity, something uh, that you were looking for. And it, it suits your skills, your capabilities. And here you apply for it. 
but then uh, at the same time you're not accepting the offer but then you're checking uh, is this God's will is this what God wanted you to do in this season is this God wanted you to accept this offer and join the company uh, there are some reasons we can ask to ourselves, why am I joining this company? Is it the skills that I have? I've been applied here. Or, uh, uh, is this the place that I love to work with? Or I'm having peace in my inner being, uh, uh, opting up for this? We need to ask ourselves, is our motives right to join this company? And is this the opportunity that God has placed before us to guide? And then you can take it up. But if you have, uh, at the same time, if you have two or three companies, uh, then you know you can also pray about it. Pray and ask, do you have this inner peace? Do you have a word from God? Do you have this inner peace? Now you've been led by the Holy Spirit. And why are you choosing this company? For what reason? Is your motives right? You know, you can look for different reason before you could make a decision and then you can proceed with the job offer so god orders things step by step in our circumstances in our situation and he guides us through there are times you know um, when we travel uh, over the mountain top or to some uh, region you see the mist discovered because the mist is covered, sometimes we don't get to see the uh, uh, the length of the road to a certain area, you know. But as you keep moving, it it unveils, it unveils uh, slowly. The mist uncovers, and you are able to see the road and go through the path. But if you stand, you cannot see. You feel like there is no road ahead. There's no way ahead. But then as you move, it is only when we move, we see the um, the, uh, the road. Uh, it uncovers the road. In the same way, only when we move, we see God unveiling the situations to us step by step. And, you know, we see that God, uh, uh, you know, uh, God stays mindful of other factors at work in life situation. We had to speak to the storms to calm them, to the mountains to move. Uh, it is like uh, not every situation or every circumstance that we face in our life is from God. But then it is also, we should know that there is also an enemy who works at the same time. So we can't consider everything that happens in our life saying, okay, God is in control. If it is God's will to happen, let it happen. If not, that's okay. No, that is not what God is expecting us to say. Yes, God is in control. He is in control of the situation. But then as believers, as the children of God, we should know what is happening in our life. Is God asking us to wait or is it an obstacle? Is it an opposition uh, from the enemy to uh, stop God's work in our life? We need to say, we need to see that and speak to the storms to come and speak to the mountains to move. When we speak, the devil flees. He flees away. They must. Uh, we need to speak in faith so that we see the storms come and the mountains move in our life. But there are some times we face situation or circumstance due to our own um, own uh, mistakes or the wrong choice that we make. We, we should remember that what we reap is what we sow. we need to be very careful to face such situations and uh, even when we uh, uh, when we step into any wrong situation in our life but remember god is a god of forgiveness he forgives us he overcomes he helps us to overcome our mistake when we ask god to forgive us and uh, ask god to lead us uh, he is uh, he is, uh, is all-powerful God who can forgive us our sins and, you know, he can put us back to the track so that we can lead us, we can move ahead. 
while we are aware that uh, god is in work in our life in our situation we must also discern and act with wisdom and accept what is from god and confront and overcome what is of the enemy we should uh, discern we need to ask god god give us this wisdom to discern the things the situations in our life to know to know and act accordingly and uh, there are sometimes um, like we also uh, when we covered the old testament survey we also read about the life of gideon how he tested god three times to make sure that this is what god is asking him to do yes that was there it was those days at the old testament but not in the new testament as a new testament believer we need to trust god we need to know god because it's no more like god is speaking to us from out but god has given us his holy spirit who abides in us they didn't have the word those days but we have the word of god with us we need to see what the word of god is speaking to us we need to listen to the inner voice to the inner witness of the holy spirit what he is ministering to us in our life and then be led by the inner witness of the holy spirit because god has instructed us to lead our life by his word and by his spirit even in the new testament we see in the book of acts initially in chapter 1 we see how the disciples cast lots to find uh, um, to replace the place of judas and then the lot fell on matthias and they numbered him as the 11th apostle however this was done even before the pentecost even before the holy spirit can descend on each one of them but after the day of pentecost we see in the same book of acts later part in acts 13 we see that they ministered to the lord and fasted and prayed the holy spirit said now separate to me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them so we need to lead ourselves by what the holy spirit is saying and not by casting lots or testing god and doing that we will with this we will move on to the next point not every closed door is a no not every closed door is a no some uh, some uh, doors that are closed because we have not knocked on them we have not knocked on them matthew 7 can one of us turn to matthew chapter 7 verse 7 to 8 matthew chapter 7 verse 7 ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you eight for everyone who asks receive he who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be opened yes not every objection that we face in our life is a no is a, a no from god no we need to keep moving ahead some doors are closed simply to redirect us to the correct door that will open up in the right time so we need to continue in the way that god is leading us and do not stop for example joseph and mary when they went to bethlehem they did not find a room in the inn but that does not mean that uh, uh, what uh, 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 mother mary was carrying uh, was not the uh, was not the uh, uh, jesus the son of god it was uh, she never doubted on it was not conceived by the power of the holy spirit if it was so then the in should be ready everything should have worked smooth but then they were led to the manger where the child was been birthed 
so till the right door they had to keep knocking till they reached the right place the right door they never thought it was not revealed to them the child needs to be birthed in the manger but then they kept knocking they went step by step in the same way maybe the complete things are not revealed to us but when we face any closed doors let's not stop in that by saying this is not god's will but then move ahead till the door opens that's the reason in uh, matthew chapter 7 we read that ask and it will be given to you seek and it shall be you 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 will find knock and it will be opened to you that means what we need to ask we need to pray we need to seek we need to knock till we reach the right door till things happen in our life till the circumstances change till the situations are fine we need to keep doing what we are doing we should not stop we should it shouldn't be like okay i prayed and got an answer so i gave up thinking it is not god's will i knocked i did my best i gave my best i think god uh god uh, god decided uh, not to open up this particular door for me how long did we seek how long did we ask how long did we knock we need to do it even if you see in the very verse the first letter of ask is a seek is s and knock is k simply put as ask ask till something happens till your circumstance change till your situation change till the right door opens to you let's continue going ahead not every delay is denial some closed doors are there because we are supposed to knock on them and some doors are closed simply to redirect us to the right way we may have faced such doors in our life as well we may face how did we react in such situations did we give up or did we continue did we think that it is a denial from god or there are certain situation in our life there are certain dreams in our life still may not have been fulfilled but have we given up on those dreams or are we waiting on the lord are we asking seeking and knocking or are we given up when we don't give up and hold on to god suddenly things change it starts working on our behalf but god starts unfolding his plan into our life in the right time in the right season just the way god orchestrated for mary and joseph but for that we need to continue we should not give up we need to trust on god and move ahead in our life can one of us read psalms 105 verse 17 to 22 Psalms 105 verse 17 onwards He sent a man before them Joseph who was sold as a slave they afflicted his feet with fetters he himself was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass the word of the Lord tested him the king sent and released him the ruler of peoples he and set him free he made him lord of his house and ruler over all his possessions to imprison his prin- princess at will that he might teach his elders wisdom yes here we see the life of joseph what happened in life of joseph we see uh, you know at a very young age he gets a dream he gets a dream and he also shares that dream with his parents and with his siblings 
and that made his brothers to be very uncomfortable with him and they were jealous of him and what happened many things in his life didn't go very well they just sold him they just sold him um to as a slave to egypt and even in egypt we see that he was as a slave he was working in for potiphar's house and there you see he was he was uh uh, uh because of his a uh, uh, potiphar's wife he was put into jail for the mistake that he did not commit and throughout the season you see uh, yes david uh, went to, through uh, through hard time through many trials but then he trusted god that god will change his situation he never thought uh, you know uh, that dream was just a dream he trusted on god he never we uh, the scripture does not say that he cribbed he complained he trusted god and scripture clearly says that god was with david and david did not sin even when potiphar's wife had to misbehave with him he ran away from her but during this time of trial he waited and he trusted on god though he encountered many closed doors though a situation was so much so like you know he had to give up on his dream thinking everything is over in his life everything is over in his life but then he trusted on god that god is guiding me god will bring me through this he can make things work in my life but it was in the prison when he was put in prison it was in the prison that uh, uh, the gift of interpreting dreams was activated to david sorry to joseph we may be going through our own season of trial but in this season is when god will activate certain skills in our life that is needed for him to bring out his plan out in our life so we need to see the hand of god is at work in our situation we may not know the complete picture we may not know the complete picture for example uh, there was a story a very beautiful story saying that a woman visited a uh, um a uh, exhibition and there she saw a old man uh, weaving a beautiful weaving a carpet okay weaving a carpet and you see only the threads and knots different colors of threads and knots there and you know she saw the focus of this elderly uh, man that he put in and so gently he was doing but she didn't understand what he was doing because she could not make out the design she could only see uh, the uh, uh, the threads the knots but after some time when she passed through when the uh, when the gentleman finished weaving he turned the carpet out and she saw a beautiful design of a bunch of flower on flowers on the carpet so what she didn't get to see before she sees it now and she admires at the whole work this similarly in the same way when we are passing through the situation and through the difficult uh, circumstances we may not understand god's hand god's plan in our life but when we wait when we wait and when we go through it we see how beautifully lord has led us even the, uh, during the trial times god's hand was upon us much more than what he was at the other time god is faithful god leads us and he guides us as per his word he says that i will never leave you nor forsake you we can trust on him that he is with us even when we face the closed doors it is just that he is leading us to the right door that we can go until that time we need to wait on god just like how joseph waited one night 
change Joseph's situation. He could interpret Pharaoh's dream. From being a slave, Joseph, you know, was changed. His situation was changed to become the prime minister, the head of Egypt. The power was given to him. He headed the uh, he headed this country. He headed this nation. One who was slave. One who was slave in the uh, uh, in the prison, and now God changed the situation and uh, you know brought him out to uh, to head the nation. Everything changed for Joseph. When we continue to trust on God, when we trust on God we see the closed door open to us. The night he went to bed as a slave with that prisoner's clothing and next day you see it, the situation has been changed. The power has been handed over to, Dave, uh, to, to Joseph. Things changed in his life. In the same way, things can change in our life. But we need to wait on God. We need to keep asking, seeking and knocking so that the things can change. Circumstance can change. Situation can change. God can move on our behalf because he is a God of all powerful. He can do things much greater, much powerful. Even what our eyes have not seen, our mind has not imagined, nor it has not been conceived in our thoughts or in our heart. We need to trust God. When we trust God, we see closed doors open. And, uh, you know, God is above the time season. He can restore it for us. We need to discern when God is orchestrating something in our life. Is it He? Or it is not. When it is not from God, we need to speak to the storm. We need to speak to the mountain and command it to move from our life and walk into what God is doing in our life, what God is orchestrating in our life. One thing we need to remember, friends, that God does things revealing to his children. God does not do things arbitrarily. He reveals things before in hand. So that all we have to do is, yes, this is what the Lord wanted us to do. And we can step into that season just the way he did for Joseph. God revealed things to Joseph much before at hand. So when things were getting unfolded in Joseph's life, he knew this is what God has planned for him. This is what the dream that he had before in his father's house is getting fulfilled now. In the same way God speaks to us, he can speak to us through his word, through the inner witness of his Holy Spirit or through others. When God speaks, hold on to his promise, trust God for the right time. And when we wait on him, you see the closed door open. You see the way that you did not see before, you get to see now. The opportunities come your way, seeking you, searching you. And you know, you will definitely know this is what God has done in your life. And it is for sure, it's God's hand in our life. He confirms us. Praise God, how uh, the way God works. And uh, there are certain examples in our, uh, in our book, how God uh, opened up the church in Manglo. How initially it started uh, by uh, one doctor called Dr. Ranjit Peter. He visited Bangalore and uh, shared his desire uh, of starting a, a church location in a place called Derlakate, which is outside Mangalore, outskirts of Mangalore. Then pastor took up that opportunity and they first uh, uh, conducted a concert there. And they saw 20 people turn up to that concert. And later next day, they, uh, they invited them to church and people didn't turn up for church as well. And then we see how we started the Nepali church. There were about 10 Nepali people approached pastor to teach them to teach the word every Tuesday. 
and then that's how the group started growing and they launched APC Nepali Church and later as the church grew in many number uh, you know uh, they released this church to uh, you know establish their own platform and later we see how the catalyst ministry was birthed in apc church catalyst ministry is uh, where we carry the word of god to the schools to the school children the first it started with the invitation from one of the school asking can you please teach the scripture classes uh, scripture class in our school and when uh, uh, to to teach that they had the right time they received pastor selena as one of our pastor who was also a faculty of a bible college she joined the team and she uh, thought uh, she started this project in one school and later launched it many other schools in in the city of bangalore and later we also uh, started god tv and uh, the short term bible college in a similar way God just gave us an idea, gave us one opportunity, and later it opened up in other places as well, and it's it's growing. We see how God is leading us in the right way. And similarly, even in our own life, God may have opened a small opportunity. We may think it is just a step. Of our time being, but then that became our skill, that became our job. I remember, uh, I remember a friend of us. You know, she came all the way from Uganda to Bangalore to study on a beautician course. When she came here, she joined our church. She was very regular in attending the church. She was good in leading worship. We saw that skill of you know she uh, she was good in singing. So we asked her to be part of our worship team. And as she was part of our worship team, we saw she was growing in the skill, and she was also had the skill to lead worship. So we gave her the opportunity to lead worship, and she started leading in a very beautiful way. And slowly, we opened up an opportunity to her. By uh, the time that you are here in Bangalore, as you are doing a beautician course, would you like to join a Bible college and study the Word? She was open enough. Immediately, she took that opportunity. But in the same time, God was also ministering to her in her heart, preparing her to do something like this. So when the opportunity came away, she grabbed it. She joined the Bible college. Initially, it was difficult for her, but God gave her the grace to study the word. And she stood out. She was excellent in what she was doing. She studied two years. She completed a diploma in, uh, uh, diploma in theology in Bangalore. She never thought that she would study theology in Bangalore. But she, the main reason that she came to Bangalore was to do a beautician course. And then now she goes back to her home, to Uganda. What happens there? All she desired to open up a parlor and start a beautician, but then the opportunity opened in her own local church to serve there as a ministry leader because she graduated from a Bible college. And she started serving there. She served one year faithfully there. She saw God opening new doors. And, uh, and in the meanwhile, due to the pandemic, we also launched an online Bible college. And she was overwhelmed with that news. She said, I want to complete my third year. She joined third year through online and, you know, last year she could complete the third year and now she's a BTH. She graduated a bachelor's in theology and she continues to serve as a ministry leader in her church. She heads worship team and uh, she also serves very actively in the church, ministering to people. See how God changed her life. She came for a different reason to India. But when she went back, she went back as a servant of God. And she's serving there as a servant of God. 
God can change things even in our life, in an, even in a life situation in a similar way. I open up to the class now. If you would like to share how God worked and changed your circumstances, your situation, when you allowed God to work in your life, just like how Joseph did. Is there anyone in our class would like to share? Please go ahead. Or you experience any closed doors and, you know, God opened that door for you. Is there anyone in the class? This will only encourage us, build us in faith and um, give us more confidence to wait on God, to have that faith on God. Anyone in the class? Brother Lubega, you would like to share? Brother Isaac? Yes, can I share? Yes, please. Okay, God bless you. Um, <clears throat> in my life, what happened? When I finished high school, I came to the capital of our country, that because I'm in Sierra Leone. I came to the capital, Freetown, because in the provinces, uh, job opportunities are very uh, uh, slow or low. But um, when I was coming to Freetown, my desire was to work in broadcasting. Yeah. So I wanted to do broadcasting and journalism. And indeed, I applied to the national station. And for seven, eight, nine months, like you are saying, the doors were closed. And it seems like nothing was happening. But still, apart from broadcasting, I wanted to work because I just left school. And then what happened, uh, a schoolmate of mine, who we all attended sixth form, came to Freetown. He started working for the airline industry. And whenever I come from seeking job, sometimes I pass through him, we talk, and sometimes he give me pocket money. And there came a time he told me, look, Isaac, you know when we were in school, you are interested in broadcasting. But it's a government job. It's not coming on easily. I will advise that um, you apply to our company, which is an airline company. So the personnel manager is very straightforward and God-fearing. And indeed, from that time, I applied. And after nine months, I was again. I attended two interviews. The job was not coming. On the third interview, I got the job by the special grace of God. And I was so happy. And I've done this job all throughout my life. I'm now a retired air, airline and airport worker. So, like the circumstances changed. I came for broadcasting and journalism. I ended up in the airline industry, transportation industry. Praise, Praise God. God. That's a wonderful testimony. Thank you, brother, for sharing. Anyone else would like to share how God changed your situation, circumstances, or you experienced any closed doors and God opened it for you? Brother Enoch. Brother Praise Enoch. the Lord. That's nice. Sorry, I joined late because I, was, I did it all night. So, but thank God I was able to meet up. Praise God. God is awesome God. When he loves you, he will teach you a lesson. Yeah. Mine was a lesson and I'm grateful to God today. Praise God. I said something the other time that after my wedding, God said, go and serve me. A week after my wedding, um, I ventured to where I, I obeyed Almighty God. I went to Bible school, 
That's why that my degree is a religious studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so I want to know more of God. Mm -hmm. I obeyed. At a point, my wife lost her job. Oh. No job for me. I, everywhere we are closed. Really closed doors. Baby children are there. Oh God, what do I do? I started asking God, what is the matter? Every door we are closed. Ah, to feed on is become a problem. So we back on God, started asking him. And God revealed what I have done that made the door to be closed. That you refuse to do one so 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 and so work. You refuse to pray for so so and so. And the person eventually gone for that. When I've sent you. Now we started asking God for mercy. Then I told God, if you are for actually forgive me, I want a job without an interview. And after three days later, somebody called me. Can you do a research for us? Can you write a proposal for us? It's an NGO. I mean, before I come, I'll be working with Nigeria Red Cross as a staff and under NGO to be writing proposal. So I said, there's no problem. It's okay, come to my office. And that was how the job came. The open door surface again without an interview, without anything. I said, to mm -hmm. this is God. Because when God send you, and you, you, you disobey, it will automatically close the door for you to learn. So I, that was my experience. And I thank God the door actually opened because we seek God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, Brother Enoch. Thank you so much for sharing. And that's so encouraging each one of us here. I'm sure many of us here are... Uh, these two testimonies would be a blessing and a encouraging to each one of us that we need to respond to God when the opportunity comes our way. It is not by accident it happens. The right God is preparing us. And then he unfolds things for us to take it, for us to receive it. Okay. Thank you so much. What we'll do is we will take a quick 10-minute break and we will be back soon. Okay. Thank you so much. See you all soon after a short break. God bless. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to write to you. How do I write to you personally, privately, please? 